0.9. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, is we're going to split the entry criteria into two videos. So this video is going to be based on risk entries. Now, they're called risk entries for a reason. It's because they have a lower, it has a lower strike rate, but it is a set and forget method. So how does this work? Now, before we get there, our entry criteria, we have two patterns for a buy and two patterns for a sell. Okay, so for a sell, okay, we have two patterns. Okay, the first pattern is when you get this situation. Okay. And the second situation is when you get this. Okay, and for a buy, and I'll explain these after I've drawn them all for you. So for a buy, uh, we're looking here. Okay, so the first pattern is Is that and the second pattern is oh, have I drawn this too close? No, nah, it's fine. There we go. So let's talk about the cell to start off with. So the first thing we need to see is what is happening. So we have a break of structure. Now remember if for a cell when price is already continuing like this. When it's a break of structure, it could be potentially grabbing liquidity. But remember, if it's coming down, because remember the structure, there's liquidity above the highs and the lows. So this is grabbing liquidity from the previous high and then breaking structure. The only way to confirm if price is changing in trend is if we have another break of structure here. However, we can have an entry point here. Okay, because there is going to be an OB which broke the structure sitting here. Okay, at this point. But there's also an OB. Oh, sorry. There's also an OB sitting here. Right? So we can have another entry sitting at this point. Now, in terms of entries, this is en entry number one, which is, I'm just going to put, uh, actually, you know, what? I'm going to do it like this. So N, no, that's really bad. So entry number one is here and entry number two is there. Entry number one has the lowest probability um, for the trade. Why? It's because this can be a liquidity grab and price can continue up to the upside, right? So we don't know if this is going to work or not. Entry number two is the safest entry possible, right? And if you think about it in terms of how to confirm our trend, which is the two rules, we need the impulse and a successful retrace which breaks. Okay, after the, the successful retrace, that will confirm that price is going to change in trend, whether price is bullish or bearish, right? So in this situation, which is pattern number two, is when we just have the break of structure, no liquidity grab, okay? But, and then we have another break of structure. When we have the first break of structure, yes, there's going to be an OB sitting here. And there's also an OB sitting here. Okay, there's an OB at every single break of structure, right? So entry number one, okay, is going to be this one, which is the first one. Entry number two, okay, is going to be here. Entry number two is the safest one. Why? Is because to confirm if price is changing in trend, we need the impulse and a successful a successful retrace, which breaks structure. But that does not mean we can't take an entry from um, entry number one. It just is telling you that the probability of one working is lower than number two. So the safer entry is always going to be number two, right? But using number two, the risk is that you may miss the trade, but it's the safest option. So as a trader, our first thing should be preserving capital. So just bear that in mind. In terms of looking for a buy, the same situation. So we're going in, we're going to be coming down, for example, from up here. Yeah? So we are grabbing liquidity from down here as well as up here. So we don't know at this point if price is going to change in trend or not. But we have broken structure here. 
Okay, our first entry can be at the OB, which caused the break of structure. Okay, that's number one. Our entry number two is the same, right? It's after the next break of structure. Same thing. Entry number two is a safer entry than number one. Why? It's because we got the impulse, the successful retrace, which breaks the structure. That's why number two is the safest entry to use. However, again, we can take the entry off number one, should we wish. Okay. And it's a personal preference. And in terms of your risk appetite, how you want to play that. Pattern number two for a buy is basically the same as a sell, where we don't have the liquidity grab, but we have a break of structure and break of structure. So we can look for the, to enter at the first break of structure, which is happening here. And then we can look to enter at the second break of structure, which is happening there. Okay, so we can look to enter here. So entry number one is there and entry number two is there. Again, entry number two is a safer option than entry number one. Why? It's because we don't know if it's just a liquidity grab. Okay, we don't know if this is a liquidity grab from the previous high um, and then coming down again. Okay, we don't know that. That's why. But this is the only pattern that we are going to be looking for for a buy, and that's the only pattern, only two patterns, right, for a sell. That's the only thing you need to train your eyes for, as well as understanding the two rules. Okay, and implementing in implementing the two rules into this to make that, you know, to build in the story for every single trade that you take. Okay, now I'm going to explain this again in the confirmation entry video again, so we can reiterate why we can reiterate this again, because this is the only thing that we are looking for. Okay, so what is a risk entry then? Okay, so say, let's look for a sell to start off with. So... Let's look at pattern number one. So pattern number one is this one. So what a risk entry essentially is, is so we've got two entries. We've got one entry sitting here and the second entry is sitting there. Entry number one, which is this one, is got the lowest probability, but entry number two is a safer option. Now, in terms of risk entries, how you would do it. So say this this whole thing is on the four hour time frame. What you do is when you have a four hour OB, which is sitting there and here, okay. Remember in terms of refining the OB, you will refine that OB to as small as you can, right? And then all you would do is place your entry at either the open or the 50%. Or if you get a wick trick, you use the wick trick. Okay, and then you'll place the order after the break of structure and then wait to see what happens. Same thing again here, you would find your four hour OB or daily OB, whatever OB you have, but you'll place your order and refine the OB as much as you can to give you a good stop loss and then you place the trade, right? And then hopefully you're, you're gonna let that, you're gonna set and forget the order and let it go. Simple as that. That is what basically what a risk entry is. Right. The difference in terms of risk entry and a confirmation entry will be explained after you. Well, you understand it after you explain after you understand what a confirmation entry actually is. But this is the risk entry is the lowest pro, lowest strike rate way to trade this strategy. But it is ideal for people who you know don't have time on the charts because the confirmation entry requires you to be active once price enters your OB. So in terms of your higher time frame, the four hour and above is your higher time frame okay that should provide your higher time frame buyers so say for example on the four hour we have the first break of structure we can look for a risk entry sitting in here so we can refine this ob as much as we like and then place the order and then set and forget okay the only thing that's going to invalidate this order is if this low gets broken without price getting there if this low gets broken right without say price never even reached never even reached there and broke structure our new range is going to be from here to here. So we're going to be looking for an entry point there. Okay. And this one is going to be the safer entry. So this one, even though it's a risk entry, you have the higher probability to wait for this one and enter the trade here. Okay. Using a confirmation entry will give us an opportunity to trade option number one 
with confirmation to increase the probability but it makes sense in the next video for a sell no yeah for a buy sorry exactly the same thing so when you have this situation okay we've got entry number one which is we've got entry number one which is here and entry number two so you locate the OB which caused the break of structure you refine it and you place the order you place the order and you basically set and forget until your order gets triggered and you wait for the range to be broken. Once the range is broken, you can move your stop loss to break even or you can set that as your target or so on. It's completely up to you how you want to do that. Right. And then you've got entry number two, which is here. Exact same thing. You locate your OB, which caused the break. You set your order. You refine that. Then you set your order at either the open or the 50 percent. And then you wait for that to trigger and then you um, continue the move okay you just set it and forget that's the benefit of this strategy of using it this way you just set and forget simple as that so what invalidates your order so say for example um, we'll look at this example again if you have for example uh, so you break structure right now that you've broken structure you locate which OB caused the break you refine that. Say you found you refined it from the four hour um, to the five minute OB, for example. Okay, that is your five minute OB. So you're going to set your order here. Okay, let me just use this for for the second. So you're going to set your order there. Now the only thing that's going to invalidate it is if you create if you create a high, for example, which doesn't reach but then breaks structure. You've invalidated the trading range, which is from the OB high to this low that was created. So now that you've validated it, your new range is going to be this one. And you're going to focus on this OB now. So that's going to be your new trading range. So you can ignore the order. You can get rid of that and place a new order from this OB here. Okay, and this is going to be entry number two. Okay. This is going to be entry number two and you can wait for this to trigger and for it to continue to come down simple as that using a risk entry essentially just finding the ob refining it and then placing the order and setting and forgetting that's literally all it is same thing for same thing for a buy is if we're in this situation where um oh wait i drew that wrong sorry say you're in this situation Okay, you've got the first break of structure, you've got your OB here. Price didn't come to this OB, but it broke the range low, which was this range from here to, um, from here to here. So now that we've broken that, this is now going to be your new range, okay, that's formed. So your OB entry is going to be from there. So you're going to place the order at either the open or the 50% of your refined OB and wait for one of them to trigger. It's up to you which one you want to use. Okay, remember from the previous video. So let's look at a trade example of a risk entry. So how is this going to work? Let's move back to here. Okay, so we've just broken structure, okay, on this. So this is our first structure break. We're going to locate which OB caused that break, okay? We're going to highlight this OB as being the most extreme OB here, right? Let me just make this. Okay, that's the lowest point. For example, we go from the daily. Okay, this is your daily OB and we've just broken this structural high. That's this wick, right? We go down to the four hour. We can refine that four hour down to this one, right? We still break structure, but in terms of the trading range, your trading range is from here let me make that different actually let me there you go your trading range is from there to this point here okay that high that's been created now until this high or low has been broken that's going to invalidate this order so what we're going to do is we're going to refine this down as much as possible now generally what you do is you can re use a replay tool find your ob Go down the time frames and refine that down to as low as you can until you find a refined OB. So you keep going down and try to find a clear OB that's not been mitigated. Okay, remember you want one with a clear imbalance as well. 
Generally, sometimes you can trade without the imbalance, but personally, I don't like that. I like to have a clear one that's not been touched. So for this example, there's actually one on the 30 second time frame, okay, which we can see right there. Once you identify where your OB actually is, you can you can actually mark this out, right? So the high's already been marked. Let me make this a bit thin. Okay, you can now go back to your time frame that you were going to set the order for anyway. Let me go back to where price was at the moment of setting the order. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay. Now that you've identified your refined OB to this point here, okay, all you do is literally you set your order. So you set your order, you set your order, there you go. You set your order at the open of the OB or the 50%. It's completely up to you. But at this point, there's no need to use the 50% because the stop loss would have been, if you put it below. So my minimum is two pips. You could have had a two pip stop on this one, right? If you had a two pip stop, you could place your target at the next high. Now, in terms of the entry pattern, what can we see is in terms of what's happening here, right? We created this move up, okay? And then we had another break of structure. So we are entering there because that is our, that is our entry pattern from here. Okay, we're following the break of structure. There's no liquidity grab here. One thing I forgot to mention is when you see a liquidity grab, we mark that as an LG. Okay, that's what you'll see on our charts, which is also in the abbreviation section of the Discord. Okay, so there's no liquidity grab in this section, but we do have a break of structure. So we is perfectly valid to take the entry at this point, at this OB. So now that we refined it, we just set the order. Oh wait, I didn't move my order across, sorry. Oops, <laughs> it looks like it didn't trigger, but it did. Um, sorry, there you go, there you go. So it triggered at the 30 second with, oh, sorry, I think I moved it. Um, so we're gonna set this at the open of the 30, yeah, there we go, and his stop loss is fine. Probably, okay, we'll put it three pips, just put it one pip below the, one pip below the low. So there you go, okay, we'll say that's three pips. That's a little effort. Okay, so now we hit TP perfectly and that would have been a, how, what was that? 65 R trade as a set and forget. And what? It hit TP in two days. Okay. That's the benefit of using risk entry is once you break the structure, you literally set your order and that's it. You don't have to watch it until it triggers and it hits TP. That is the mechanical route to how to trade using a risk entry. That's all it is for a risk entry, right? You find your OB, you refine it, and then you look to enter. Simple as that. You refine it to as low as you feel you want to, and then you can look to enter that. You can even do, you can even do 50% of the four hour OB, right? Which would have given you what? A, it would have given you a what? 11 pip stop, which is a bit big for me, but if it's not for you, then you could have just done that. Okay, so don't feel you have to refine it all the way down. And don't feel you need a second time frame to do so. But that is how you use a risk entry. So the next video, we're gonna talk about confirmation entries, which is the most used method to actually enter using this strategy. Um, and is the entry method that I use myself. I don't use risk entries anymore. Well, I used to, I don't use them anymore purely because of the strike rate. So the confirmation entry will help determine whether price is gonna respect this OB or not. Because we know that price will doesn't doesn't always respect an OB. It doesn't always play out regardless of the story behind it. So we'll see you in the next video.